Live from the, from the South Bay in California, Home Free Radio, where the real gospel lives with Bishop Jonathan Ferial. Tune in every Thursday and Friday morning from 7 to 9 a.m. for music and the word of God that will lift you up. Join us and be blessed. To God be the glory. Welcome once again to our Home Free Friday edition. And as we always say, this is Home Free Friday. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Brother Reno. Good morning, Bishop. And good morning to all of our listeners and viewers of Home Free Radio. It is Home Free Day. Happy Friday to everyone. And as they say in the world, TGIF. Thank God yes. it is Friday. Although I remember one time uh, my daughter Miracle wearing a uh, hoodie and says TGIF and, and I said, is that, thank God it's Friday? Or, no, he, she says, thank God I'm Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, whether you are Filipino, American, Mexican, European, white, or somewhere in between, uh, you are most welcome to our home free Friday Amen. edition, and we are so happy to have you in our living room today. And so let's um, uh, join together and fellowship with one another. We can talk about uh, what is uh, in your mind, and we can pray for those burdens that you have. But at the same time, we also have a list of... Um, wonderful interesting subjects that we are going to be talking about and today we have uh, some special guests yes absolutely we you know we, we celebrate diversity and mm -hmm. culture here uh, in the church and on home free radio and i love that we can just talk about anything mm -hmm. uh, as serious mm -hmm. as uh the most um challenging church topics and on the bible but we can also talk about uh, fitting 15 people on a tricycle. Yes. So the variety of our conversations is vast and we love having a chat with you. So all throughout today, give us a call at 1-888-774-9673. Again, the number is 1-888-774-9673. Our lines are open today for um, 7 to 9 a.m. the entirety of the broadcast. If you are willing to stay and chat with us, then we'll even stick around for a little while longer but do uh, engage with us and interact with us in the comment section here below or by giving us a call at that toll-free number and today bishop we have some special guests as you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, in celebration of black history, history month. month and earlier you were having a chat with brother Shaq yes. about his background his culture and i, I think that was pretty eye-opening even mm -hmm. to begin with mm -hmm. uh before 7 a.m so and uh, yeah. we can't wait to have him uh join us for our interview today and speaking of uh topics we are going to continue talking about your favorite breakfast yes. because yesterday everyone you know we're not uh, thinking about the end of the program mm -mm. the program was already no. officially ended but you guys keep on talking about breakfast we went into overtime with you all talking about yeah, your dying your, yeah breakfast goto yeah. obsessions so we're gonna continue talking about breakfast today and uh hopefully uh, one of these days you can send us some of your fave uh breakfast and not just talk about it actually there's a special surprise at the end of the oh program. i i love so surprises just get ready but uh yes. thank you in advance to our sponsors you know who you are we'll talk about it later okay uh today in our current events nasa's perseverance successfully touches down on mars mm -hmm. so we I think space travel has always been a, a dream. You know, you know what? I love to always read news about astronomy. Mm. I, I love watching videos about astronomy, reading articles about astronomy, and this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, breakthrough of NASA sending this unmanned uh, spacecraft uh, to the surface of Mars is truly uh, exciting. And this... Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been watching uh, those uh, video snippets mm -hmm. that they have been uh, releasing. And yesterday, 
uh, they were successful in bringing this uh, rover. Yes. And this before this rover started out like a matchbox. Now oh, yeah. it is as big as a car. Right. Like there's a car <laughs> uh, made Mars. of all kinds of uh, you know high tech. Uh, technology that is now roving mm -hmm. planet Mars. I, I think I remember the first few attempts mm. when we were trying to get over uh, and, and the landing wasn't so great, but uh, NASA figured it out. And so they even have a Twitter account, NASA's Perseverance mm. Mars will Re That's interesting. You were just talking about Perseverance on yes. Sunday, mm -hmm. uh, yesterday in our, in our Bible study. And so, so uh, we awesome. will be talking about uh, Perseverance uh, pretty much uh, throughout this uh, week until tonight for the prayer meeting and speaking of perseverance uh, of this rover that uh, touched down on planet Mars the reason uh, they did that was to find out if there was life in right. Mars mm -hmm. before right. that's why they landed perseverance in um, in a lake bed yes. that they uh, said was used to be a, a lake. Mm -hmm. The hypothesis there is that if there is water on mm, Mars... There's life. Yes. So uh, that's pretty interesting to look into. And we hope that you'll follow this new story with us as it develops and see if eventually some of us will be moving to Mars. And speaking of space, you know, uh, once the GMC is uh, completed, mm -hmm. I'm thinking of getting those uh, high-powered telescope. Ooh. Because you know the, the 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 evening sky is pretty much uh, clear right. up there in the GMC. I I, I love looking into space, uh, into the sky, yes. and someday, someday, one of these moments we will be up in the sky. And Praise the Lord. Just to clarify to everyone, <laughs> astronomy is different from astrology with the different horoscopes. Yes. Uh, but I'm a Don't buy into any of this uh, astrology uh, mambo jumbo. Um, just uh, get into astronomy. It's mm -hmm. uh, interesting. Yes. In other news, uh, low income Californians will receive $600 in the state stimulus. So this is pretty interesting for uh, Tito Gavin Newsom to be giving out. Uh, stimulus checks to those in need, but very helpful, especially for um, the mom and pop shops mm -hmm. who, that have been closing down, uh, especially for small businesses. Ang lagi kong sinasabi, basta papasok. Mm -hmm. Basta papasok. Yes. You know, it's okay. Yes. <laughs> better to, no, just kidding. I was saying it's better to receive than give, but for those things, if it's a freebie, why not? And especially if, if we can contribute to God's work with uh, that stimulus check then by all means but again this month of february is black history month and we are diving uh into all that uh black history has to share to us mm. last night uh I, I last night i was able to watch the pbs special have you uh, seen the pbs special yes. the uh the black church yes our church our song it was so insightful mm -hmm. i love every uh, moment of it yes. it was a two hour special and i watch it from beginning to end yes. especially on the part that um, the churches among the african-american uh, community was literally the the glue mm -hmm. that uh, kept them together right. in their most trying tumultuous time mm -hmm. that and and even many of these well-known uh, black personalities that we know today all of them began right. all of them grew up in the in the church right. and um, you know I'm I'm teaching uh, Pent Pentecostal history in the Bible school and so. It is always uh, interesting to, for me to expand my knowledge on the role of black uh, church in the history of Pentecostalism. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm really interested also to find out that uh, many of the mem African American members of the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. especially from performers, um, singers, even to theater producers or, mm. or directors like Tyler Perry. They all mm. grew up in the church and, and mm -hmm. even until now, they are contributing back 
to their church families and their local communities. So um, I'm actually thinking yeah. of getting that uh, PBS special, uh, you know, and have it shown to the Bible students yes. so that our Bible students will, you know, have that uh, that thirst yes. uh, for knowledge. It was enriching for sure. It was uh, very informative, very insightful, and I love the production. Yes. Uh, aspects of the Black Church on PBS special. Yes. So, um, congratulations to uh, PBS, and I think we should start uh, giving something to PBS. <laughs> <laughs> Here are some fun facts on Black History Month. Did you know that other countries actually celebrate Black History Month too? Through the practice of celebrating Black History Month originated in America, other countries have since started celebrating. In Canada, they celebrate in February as well, while in countries like the United <coughs> Kingdom, Netherlands, and Ireland celebrate in October. So mm -hmm. not just here in the United States, but also uh, globally. So mm. I, I love that this is uh, something that we celebrate and commemorate. Did you know that Martin Luther King Jr., improvised the most iconic part of his I Have a Dream speech. The night before the march, Dr. King began working on his speech with a small group of advisors in the lobby of the Willard Hotel. The original speech was more political and less historic, according to Clarence B. Jones, and it did not include any reference to dreams. Imagine how something so spontaneous became uh, etched into the annals of history. And I want to also add to the... Uh uh, trivia about the personality of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, perhaps uh, people are thinking that um, he is a medical doctor. That's why he's being called doctor. Okay, no. But he is more of the social science. Yes. And before he could become a doctor, um, Martin Luther King was actually a pastor. Yes. He was a pastor and he was the one uh, that uh, led the um, uh, the movement uh, that uh, you know called for the uh, freedom and for the equality of uh, black uh, with, with with white. So mm -hmm. uh, that's really uh, interesting. And in the PBS special uh, last night, uh, I learned that. Um, the reason why uh, the black church was so pivotal in the life of the African-American community and to the nation in general mm -hmm. is because the church was the cradle where everything was born. So right. uh, it was in the church uh, that they started uh, developing their economic uh, structure, their uh, political activism. So it was in the black church that they 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 bore and bred everything yeah it makes sense because this was their community and mm -hmm. even for us we find more of our friends mm -hmm. our uh family members that are not of our same blood that mm -hmm. in the church and uh we can relate to them in in understanding exactly mm -hmm. how they they operate as a as a whole mm -hmm. and if like a, a body so uh it makes sense and many many of the uh, these churches uh for instance before uh, in the in the special i learned that before they actually built churches they actually built praise uh praise houses where, these are really where, like small shacks wherein mm -hmm. they could just go in it's mm -hmm. like more of a room Right. You know, and they could go in and sing praises and worship and 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 fellowship, and then after that they they leave. So, mm -hmm. and many of these praise houses are actually in Georgia. Wow, Georgia and Alabama. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm thinking about our brethren in uh, uh, Georgia. Good morning, everyone, uh, Georgians, and uh, especially to our elders, uh, brother. Uh, June and uh, Elder Lani de Guzman, they're the ones heading right now our extension in Georgia. And yes. one of these days, we'll be able to uh, visit that historical place of Georgia. Amen. You know, Bishop, Georgia. I remember in elementary school, we traveled to um, an older part of North Carolina mm. that was uh, kind of like a colony town. Mm. And it's called Old Salem. And uh, one of the places we visited was actually a praise shack. 
Oh, so you, you, you know about yes. this So places. it's a very small room. Small room, yeah. But um, the building that we that we visited was a white church. So mm -hmm. um, right next to it was yeah. the was the praise room, praise mm -hmm. house. So yeah. very interesting. And hopefully we can uh, travel to a tour mm -hmm. and visit one of those um, one day in the future. <clears throat> and lastly, did you know that black women fought for the union in the Civil War? Black men fighting in the Civil War have often been depicted in movies, but little has been said about black women fighting in the, in the Civil War. These women who couldn't formally join the army served as nurses, spies, and scouts. And the most famous was Harriet Tubman, who scouted for the second South Carolina Volunteers. I love the movie that was made uh, about Harriet. Yes, Moses. It is, yes, it is just powerful, mm -hmm. just powerful. Yes, and if you haven't watched it yet, you can check it out and love it as much as we do. And so, uh, again, for all of you who are watching right now, thank you so much for tuning in to Home Free Radio on Home Free Friday. Join us for our conversations. Give us a call at 1-888-774-9673 or comment your opinions, your questions, your concerns in the comments section below. Right and now, yes. Yes, and we would like to also acknowledge uh, those those of our brethren from all over the continental United States and even uh, abroad that are joining us right now in yes. our uh, broadcast. Saan man po kayong uh, lupalop <laughs> ng mundo na nanonood at nakikinig ng program ito ng Home Free Radio. Uh, magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. Salamat po sa inyong uh, pagsubaybay. Kung kayo po ay uh, nakikinig Uh, sa Pilipinas uh, magandang magandang gabi po at uh, sa ilang oras magmamadaling araw na rin doon at kung kayo po ay uh, wala pang balak matulog ay uh, sasamahan namin kayo sa inyong uh, panahon na ito na hindi kayo matutulog pa yes Help, let us help you uh, fall asleep. <laughs> All right. We're going to dive into our meditative reading for today, which will be found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And this is in ESV. Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 2 reads, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. One of the most beautiful approaches that uh, the writers of the Bible uses is the use of uh, metaphors, figures of speech, those kind of things in order to bring home uh, some really yet valuable im and important spiritual truths. Amen. And I, I, I love how they uh, really use the everyday uh, events uh, during their time in order to underscore the lessons that they want to teach the, their congregations, such as uh, athletics. And we know in the scriptures that athletics is one of the most uh, heavily used metaphors or figures speech in the Bible. Madalas gamitin yan, lalong-lalo na si Pablo. And, um, you know, I, I like to speculate that the Apostle Paul was quite athletic. Kasi yeah. marami siyang... Uh, mga sulat at marami siyang mga pagtuturo na ang ginagamit niya ay ang athletics. I can imagine that if he experienced all of those physical pains and mm. uh, even enduring his missionary journeys, mm. he had to be healthy in yes. tip-top shape. And uh, he, he, he was uh, someone, I believe, who was really into athletics. Mm -hmm. For one, he likened his ministry to a foot race. Right. And uh, eventually, when he was at the twilight of his career, he said that, uh, I have finished the race. So he likened the ministry to a race. Kaya sa ating mga kapasturan, sa lahat ng aking mga minamahal na kamanggagawa, 
ay patuloy lamang po tayo sa ating uh, pagtakbo, patuloy lamang po tayo sa ating uh, tinanggap na quote-unquote uh, takbuhin o karera at kahit minsan tayo ay nang lulupaypay, tayo ay nang hihina even though sometimes we feel like uh, we're so uh, uh, depleted in our mental, emotional, physical energies and Yesterday I have to admit to you I felt like I was uh, I I was so tapped out and so I took time to you know rest and to recuperate mm-hmm. and by God's grace you know I'm 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 back and my energy level is uh, you know I guess uh, back to its normal level but we go through those uh, weekdays mga mga kapasturan ano subalit so, uh, God is also our uh, source of strength and Amen. He is our uh, perpetual source of inspiration. So, let's just continue running the race ating mga kapatiran. Uh, let us not grow weary. Let us not become uh, discouraged when the race uh, is getting uh, uh, you know, steeper and uh, the climb is getting uh, more Uh, difficult uh, let's just continue the race and let's keep on looking unto Jesus Amen. because he was the one who started it all Amen. he was the one who brought us into this race and one thing that we must know that the Lord will not bring us to any place he will not bring us to any season of our lives where in his grace will be insufficient for us. Exactly. Whatever it is that He is entrusting to us, He has the means to appropriate to us so we could be able to finish what He started in us. Amen. That's why it says in uh, Philippians chapter 1 that He who began a good work in you will complete it. So let's keep on pursuing that. Let's keep on Uh, aiming for that time and place and season where we will be able to uh, be just like Paul. Hmm? Paul said that I have uh, finished the race and we are all meant to be uh, finishers. Amen. And so uh, for our quote of the day, it is uh, live a godly life and you will experience the mighty works of God in you. And that is so true. I cannot uh, agree more uh, with that because consecration and holiness are preparatory for us to become uh, instruments and vessels of uh, the Lord. Amen. And that was by Bishop Reynald Sulayo, our newly ordained bishop who just celebrated his birthday. So happy birthday po, Bishop Reynald. Praise Related, God. Uh, happy birthday, although I greeted him on his birthday. Mm-hmm. But uh, happy birthday to you, Bishop Reynald Sulayo. Yes. Home Free Radio, where the real gospel lives. Right now, we'll jump into our global mission news and announcements with Brother Kenneth and Sister Mira. Live from the South Bay in California, Home Free Radio, where the real gospel lives with Bishop Jonathan Ferial. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Home Free Radio. This is uh, Bishop Jonathan. Are you ready for this? Shout out. I'm all hyped today. We have some very wonderful things uh, in store uh, for you. Palakpak naman dyan. Have you been seeking God lately? These are the times that God is moving. Despite our, despite my imperfection, despite my unworthiness, Despite my brokenness, the Lord continues to beckon me and loves me and draws me into Himself. That, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, is evangelism. Amen. Good morning and thank you for tuning in to Home Free Radio where the real gospel lives. It is 
Happy Friday, Home Free Day, Happy Friday. And we are at the part of our Global Mission News in which we will be talking about what is going on throughout the Global Mission in the Fourth Watch. And I'm joined here once again by Sister Mira Ferriol. Hi, Sister good Mira. morning. Good morning, Sister Mira. <laughs> and to start off our news, the PMCC, Sureword Canada TV, has revamped their Sureword TV ministry in order to reach more households with the gospel. In coordination with the Miracle Channel Network, the comeback episode aired last Saturday, February 13. Media people from Sureword US and Sureword Canada are working hand in hand to help produce these awesome episodes. For more announcements on how to tune in and what time, please visit PMCC Fourth Watch Canada Facebook page. Wow, very exciting to hear this news. And I remember actually when Sureword Canada began, you know, uh, way right. back, uh, a few mm -hmm. years back. And uh, it started, you know, just a simple and a humble beginning. But by God's grace, we thank the Lord for what God is doing Amen. in Canada. And uh, in a way, they put off their own spin, the yeah, sure word. Did. So mm -hmm. uh, congratulations to the media team in Canada. And uh, for sure, we will definitely support this ministry, the sure word ministry there in Canada. Praise the Lord. Our brethren from West Africa are on the move to make known the presence of the true church. The PMCC Fourth Watch of Ivory Coast successfully held their first charity program in partnership with the Dala Kalinga Foundation to the indig indigenous people of Ivory Coast. The brethren were able to sponsor gifts and other basic needs to more than 160 children. The PMCC Fourth Watch of Ivory Coast is a budding local church in the Gilead area under the leadership of Bishop Aldrin Palanca. View more pictures from this heartfelt project on the PMCC Fourth Watch Ivory Coast Facebook page. Praise the Lord. Wow. Congratulations as well to our brethren there in Ivory Coast, West Africa. You know, I can't just to say that it's very refreshing yes it is yeah just to know that there's a church there in africa right. and it's very refreshing to see our brethren there I, mm -hmm. i've actually been able to watch, see their post on facebook really and actually yeah i have seen one you've too. seen them right yeah yeah I, I i believe like one of them were uh preaching in the market there mm -hmm. in africa so wow. it's it's awesome That's to amazing. it's awesome to see mm -hmm. our brethren there stepping up and rest assured we are praying for this global evangelistic endeavor that the work of god there in ivory coast west africa will continue to flourish and grow praise the lord and in other news the pmcc fourth watch malagasang reopens there was not a dry eye in the sanctuary as the pmcc fourth watch of malagasang welcomed home the brethren last sunday on sunday february 24th the aatf sports complex was reopened for in-person services and they held their first in-person worship in over a year with the essential safety protocols in place brethren gladly entered the worship and listened to the words of god from our beloved bishop arturo ferriol himself some young professionals remark it's a different kind of revival and strengthening when you get Amen. to hear the words of god in person especially from bishop art another expressed their excitement once they heard the announcement of in-person worship from their flock leader and immediately took the opportunity to come as the church adjusts to the new normal the apostolic heart continues to shine through as the hunger for the gathering of the saints grows stronger praise the lord you know we can really relate wow. to our brethren there in malagasang because yes. i remember when south bay reopened oh yes definitely I, that was, was crying that was a very <laughs> emotional time yeah. and you know it's it's really different Stamira. Yes. it's different when you are in the gathering of the saints mm -hmm. it's different when you're in the church yeah you know we're not discounting media or we're not discounting no, no, no. uh you know what we're doing online in fact, you know, that's what we were doing for months. Mm -hmm. But it you can really say it's really different when yes. you are in the church, when you're in the sanctuary. I like how you say welcomed home. Amen. They were welcomed home. Yes. And, and it does feel like home. Definitely. Yeah. And we we thank the Lord because every time we have um gatherings such as this, it really displays our faith as Fort yes. Watchers. You know, this uh, pandemic has really affected our gatherings. True. But nevertheless, uh, we are making a stand for our faith. Amen. And, um, you know, for uh, the PMCC Fourth Watch, uh, when we reopened the in-person worship in, in South Bay, uh, it was really uh, something that uh, brought us to give ourselves more in right. service. And uh, we're just excited and we hope and pray that more and more brethren 
you know, throughout the South Bay area will join us for this Amen. in-person worship. Yes. And uh, uh, South Bay was actually the first, right? The first to reopen their in-person mm-hmm. worship. And uh, I can, we can really relate to these churches that are reopening, that yes. are coming back to their local churches, to their buildings. Yeah. It, it, it's something that it's cannot, very overwhelming. Yeah, it's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. It's it's something that you can't ex, dis, explain or describe. But just right. just to have that joy, you know, yes, the joy. joy. And uh, mm-hmm. for our brethren that are joining in right now, if you still haven't joined in this in-person worship, you know, what are you waiting for? Right. Uh, this is a chance for us to once again worship. Amen. And uh, as the pandemic is slowly. Or it, it's going down actually right. I've, I'm lo- I've seen that it's going down uh, us as fourth watchers mm-hmm. we must make a stand for our faith Amen. so uh, congratulations to the brethren and the church in Malagasang and rest assured uh, we are expecting that more and more churches will follow this trend to reopen praise mm-hmm. the Lord the MBSI main campus held its first ever online general orientation, which marks the beginning of the new school year Praise for main campus students. Under the guidance of the MBSI Directress Evangelist Let Ferial, this orientation aimed to remind the Bible students the guidelines and policies of the MBSI. Pre- presenters included Presbyter Sam Ferial, Presbyter Charlie Magbata, Pastor Orly Ibarbia and Pastor Rex Garcia. The orientation con- concluded with an exhortation given by the MBSI Chancellor Apostle Arsenio T. Ferial. Your calling is your first priority. When you do your best in the Bible school, the God who's the source of good things will be with you. Wow. Praise the These Lord. were the words of the good man of the house, which encouraged the Bible students to fully give their utmost dedication and to be fully committed to the ministry entrusted to them. Praise the Lord. Praise you know, God. Training doesn't end. And Amen. we thank the Lord because uh, through these online means, our Bible students are being equipped are being right. strengthened in their dedication mm-hmm. and in their ministry. And uh, we are definitely praying for the developments of the MBSI throughout the whole world, especially in the right. main campus in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're ecstatic to know that our Bible students or our Bible school is continuously elevating right. in their service, in their work, in their faith, and in mm-hmm. their ministry. So definitely, uh, let's continue to support this MBSI uh, endeavor the Maranatha Bible School International and let's support it through our prayers and as well for the very people that God has called praise God and those are our global mission news and for our action program on February 22nd to the 24th is our U.S. District Church Growth Summit praise the Lord and we're excited for that sister Mir <laughs> we're excited for the U.S. District Church Growth Summit mm-hmm. and Uh, as pastors are showing their excitement in uh, coming here. And we're actually, this is not just simply for them for the sake of coming here, but we're going to be planning on how we will build the work of God here in the U.S. district. So for our pastors that are listening, that are joining us right now, uh, don't forget on February 22, 24, will be the U.S. District Church Growth Summit. And actually, this will be the first event of our Triple Treat event. Mm -hmm. And secondly, on February 24 to 26, will be the MBSI Conference. Praise the Lord. That's another gay moment. For MBSI students. So uh, I believe right now um, we have a number of students that are gearing up, that are preparing to yes. come here. Uh, tomorrow, actually, we'll be picking up uh, some students from oh, the Western right. Pacific that mm-hmm. will be coming here in uh, for the MBSI conference. So we're excited to welcome in all our MBSI students. Yes. And this will be a simultaneous uh, conference. So with... Uh, U.S. doing their doing the conference here. There will also be a conference in Canada. Right. So I believe all the Bible students in Canada will be going to Toronto yes. for that. So it's exciting to, you know, once again fellowship mm-hmm. and as well be strengthened in the ministry. And on February 27 to the 28 is our Regional Pastors Conference. Praise God. So for our pastors throughout the region, this is our time to be strengthened, to be empowered, whether you are from U.S., from Canada or Western Pacific Islands. All of these are means for us to be strengthened and empowered. And we praise the Lord because we have gatherings such as this 
to really empower us and to uh, motivate us to right. do the work of God. We're really nonstop. Hey, yeah. no, right? Non-stop. Yeah, we're ending we're ending February with a yeah. bang. Yeah. So we're every month you can really expect something. And on Feb this month of February 2020 is International Adult Month. So for our adults that are watching right now, this is your month, and you can uh, watch the episode or watch the messages, listen to the messages, and this will be aired via. Uh, good man app so if ever you have any you want to be strengthened in your faith for our adults for our families out there uh, go watch the messages uh, via the good man app and for sure uh, we believe that you will be strengthened and empowered amen now please stay connected like and share all of our facebook pages instagram accounts websites and short app for updates on upcoming events amen so right now if you're viewing if you're watching the uh home free radio i want you to open it if you can see that you open it and then you go share and share it to all your friends share it to all your family members yes. everyone on facebook and uh this is uh this is available as well via um yes to the sure word app to our websites so all the information is there if you're watching share this to your friends like comment you know we love to hear your comments and even call us at one triple eight seven seven four nine six seven three you can call us in this number later on there will be a discussion with uh bishop jonathan and as well there will be a a wonderful you know a wonderful time to talk uh, i believe our you know in this hfr we have something that something for everyone yes yes mm -hmm. and uh yesterday i believe they talked about their favorite breakfast yeah oh, a lot yeah, of you I were heard. very open about your breakfast mm -hmm. and what you love to eat so uh, i think when it comes to food people are very vocal about yeah, it they are. that's good that's <laughs> it's good. good it's good so uh <laughs> definitely um do support this ministry by liking sharing commenting uh, all of these avenues are means for us to be strengthened and before we leave we're gonna give some shout outs to our uh, brethren from Sister Narisa Bernabeo. Good morning, Brother Kenneth and Sister Mira. Happy Friday. Watch you from Antioch, California. Thank you so much for tuning in, Sister Narisa. For EM Mamu. Hello, Sister Mira. I'm Brother Kenneth. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Good morning. From Pastor Madeline Makato. Good morning, mm -hmm. Brother Kenneth and Sister Mira. Yes, good morning, good Pastor morning. Mads. And thank you as well for uh, always cooking breakfast for oh, us. Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> for the past uh, three days, uh, Pastor Mads has been right. <laughs> yeah, Coming with to us. The yeah, so thank you so much right. for, for your uh, generosity and support. For uh, Brother Roberto Ford, happy snow day here in Spokane. Good morning, Brother Kenneth Ines and Sister Mira Ferriol. Yes, thank you, Brother Roberto. And stay warm there in Spokane. I know uh, oh, yes. it's it's been it's been hard yeah. with the snow, but uh, for sure we're praying for you and uh, stay warm during these times. For uh, Elder Kathy Magano, good morning, Brother Ken, Sister Mira. Happy Blessed Friday. Yes, happy thank you so Friday much. To you too. Happy Friday. Yes. <laughs> good morning uh, from. Uh, Eliza Schonard, good morning to the both of you, Sister Mira and Brother Kenneth. Thank you for giving us update in our churches, not only local, but also global. Yes, it's our joy to share with you this news. And, yes. you know, the, the Fourth Watch Church is a busy church. Right. You know, we always There's have, always something new. Amen, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's always something happening, yeah. always something going on. So uh, it's our joy here in HFR to update you on the latest things or the latest news of what's happening throughout the world. From Jemima Faye, happy home free day, Bishop, Brother Rainio, Brother Kenneth, Sister Mira, and to all HFR staff and every listener. Thank you for keeping me awake at this hour while doing some sort of things. I know right now I what believe kind it, of things? it's almost uh, it's almost midnight. <laughs> it's almost kidding. it's almost midnight there in uh, in uh, or it's ten. Yes. Almost ten there in uh, Philippines. So thank you so much for joining and tuning in from Sam Ver Villarreal. Good, Good morning. <laughs> that was really great. Good. Where is that? <laughs> Yeah, good morning, all HFR. All caps, by the way. Yes, all, all caps. caps. Yes, so uh, thank all you so much to our enthusiastic director for that. Love uh, the energy. Yeah, lo long. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> From June Barrios, good morning, HFR team. Cold morning, pala, not good morning. Cold morning, oh, HFR gosh. team. Yes, uh, Brother June, stay warm. It is cold. And uh, we'll see you next week yeah, where yes. you'll be warm here in right. sunny Southern California. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Firm Presbyter Irwin, 
De La Cruz. Good morning, everyone, and happy birthday to Sister Jemima <gasps> from San Diego. Yes. yes. Happy birthday, Maima. Yes, yeah, so we will uh, we'll be Sister greeting Maima. Sister Maima. <laughs> That's right. We'll be greeting her later from Pastor Gemma Zonia. Thank God it's HF Radio. Praise the Lord. Yes, thank yeah. God it's HF Radio from Beverly Bedford. Good morning, HFR. God bless you all. Yes, good morning and thank you so much for tuning in to HFR. Uh, you don't want to miss what we have throughout this whole uh, morning. Uh, there will be a wonderful discussion. And for the meantime, thank you so much. And please stay tuned. This is Home Free Radio. Sitting with you over a nice hot cup of coffee, Bishop Jonathan gives a clear and concise look at different topics from a biblical stance and from his point of view. This podcast series takes on relevant subjects through the eyes of the bishop. Join in on the conversation by joining us every Thursday and Friday morning at 7 a.m. You're listening to The Bishop's Take, here only on Home Free Radio, where the real gospel lives. It's always exciting to uh, hear about the news and what's happening in the Fort Watch world throughout the globe. And we are thankful for each and every one of you for uh, sticking uh, with us uh, in this uh, Friday edition of uh, Home Free Friday. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, pagsubaybay sa ating programa. At kung kayo man ngayon ay nasa mga trabaho nyo na o kung kayo po ay uh, papunta pa lamang o kayo ay nasa inyong mga bahay at uh, naghahanda ng inyong mga uh, almusal uh, nawa ay patuloy kayong uh, sumubaybay sa programa ito. Continue to uh, tune in and uh, we got a lot of great things uh, in store for you. Yes, and today again is uh, part of Black History Month in uh, February. It is something that we commemorate here in the U.S. And today we have some very special guests with us. Who mm-hmm. um, They are not new faces to our viewers because uh, we've had them before uh, to to join you in a very special discussion uh, last year about the social unrest in America mm. uh, at its peak. But um, today, uh, I guess you'd like to introduce our guest. In celebration of our uh, Black History Month, and we in God's Church, we do celebrate our cultural diversity, especially here in uh, South Bay. Uh, we would like to be known as a church that truly celebrates and preserves and observes the beautiful kaleidoscope of various ethnicities that are uh, here in this uh, growing church of ours. And we would like to always highlight them as much as we could because when you look at the scriptures, dearest brethren, the global mission is meant to always be a cross-cultural enterprise. Amen. It is not meant to simply uh, reach out to people that belong to our uh, same color and same language, but we are meant to always uh, cross over to... Um, you know, across uh, different ethnic lines. And Jesus was the very example of that across different cultures. And this church here in South Bay is a church that we that we are intentionally trying to build to become a cross-cultural church Amen. or a multicultural church. When we say multicultural, it means that there is a good mixture of uh, different ethnicities. And now, uh, d- don't get me wrong. Uh, sometimes uh, it is easier said than done. Mm-hmm. It is uh, very challenging and it's very, very difficult. Mahirap magbuo ng church 
ng uh, na para sa iba't ibang lahi because mm-hmm. uh, in our human frailty brother Raniel uh, one of our uh, weaknesses and shortcomings is our inability to assimilate and to accommodate uh, people that do not belong uh, to our uh, group or to our ethnicity. And this is true to uh, black people, white people, yellow people, Asians. Uh, that is just how we are mm-hmm. as a people. Mm-hmm. That's why there, there must be a need for us to be brave and to be courageous and to be honest yes. and to sincerely uh, accommodate uh, you know, people that do not necessarily share our ethnicity and our language. And when you look at the scriptures, if you think it's hard for us these days, eh kahit sa panahon yan ng mga apostol eh, ang unang problema nila ay patungkol sa race. Uh, remember in the book of uh, Acts, when the Grecian uh, Jews were complaining about the distribution of food and knowing that problem, uh, the, the reason they were left out because they were not pure mm-hmm. uh, Jews. Mm-hmm. They were uh, Grecian Jews. Right. Uh, they were Jews, but they were kind of half-breed. They, they, they have that uh, Greek uh, blood in them, Greek culture and upbringing. And that did not uh, make them uh, fully, you know, uh, get... Uh, uh tied in with the with the uh purer uh he, he juice breaks, yes yes so uh that brought them kind of uh, out mm-hmm. and they were left out and so race is uh race has all, has always been the issue in the church and uh this is uh something that i am trying to advocate kasi that is the the spirit of the apostle. The apostle is very accommodating a uh, leader, and he was the one who who actually authored the global mission of the church. And when we say global mission, let's talk about uh, the global ethnicities that are out there. And so, whether you are someone from Europe and or from Asia or from uh, Canada, if you are a non-Filipino member of the PMCC Fort Watch, uh, we would like to welcome you. And Amen. we would like to let you know that here in God's true church, you are valued. Amen. You are appreciated. And we see you the way God sees you. Yes. So perhaps uh, you are married to a non-Filipino uh, individual, a black or white or Asian. And maybe you are someone who is married to them and you want to win them to the church and you, you feel like they are not fitting in. Uh, I want you to know that you must be uh, patient with them and that you must always, uh, you know, be creative to find ways how you can be able to uh, get them assimilated. Uh, Being married to someone who is non-Filipino and trying to bring them to the church definitely is always a challenge. Or maybe... Uh, you have children from a mixed marriage, um, just like uh, what uh, our uh, one of our the two guests mm-hmm. we have here. Uh, maybe you are you are Filipino, but you are from a mixed marriage. Let's say fifty uh, percent uh, of your genes is Filip- is uh, Filipino, or I should say Ilocano. Uh, Kidding, and uh, the other half is a uh, black or white or other races, and sometimes you could tell that uh, uh, they they are they are also finding it hard to mm-hmm. kind of uh, fit in because mm-hmm. they're they 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 dif- they're, they're different. Um, but again, we must be uh, a little bit uh, sensitive to them. 
And today for our for our guests here at our living room here at Home Free Radio, I am glad to uh, welcome back, if I'm not mistaken, the second time they are our guests. Uh, on my uh, left is, um, I would call the history maker because uh, he is the first ever uh, fully African-American Bible student of the Maranatha Bible School. He is uh, full-bodied <laughs> and uh, truly bona fide uh, uh, black person. And um, I, I, I love this guy. He is, uh, he's a history maker. He is a giant. He's a six-footer, 200-pounder hulking presence but uh, he has a heart of uh, uh, a child and a gentle giant. Please yes. welcome here at Home Free Radio Living Room, Brother Shaquille Lightborn. And sitting uh, next to him is also a Bible student here at the Maranatha Bible School. And uh, believe it or not, she's from uh, uh, Fremont, California. <laughs> so you will see a little bit of that uh, ghetto kind of thing. Or Cal, Bay Area. Yes, right? Bay Area there. So uh, Sister... Um, Charlene. Charlene Descartes. Praise God. Is she really? Sounds French. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last but not least is also my uh, second cousin. Oh, okay. Second cousin. Are you my second cousin? Niece? Ah, uh, ne uh, nephew. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, my, my coffin is not kicking uh, this morning. Are, are you my nephew? I think, yeah. Yes. And brother Eddie Edward is our uh, pastor from um, Alum Rock, California. So welcome here at uh, HFR. I'm, Brother Inyan, I'm going to give you yeah, uh, the first question. For crop, sure. You know, uh, to g ask them questions. Thank you so much for, to the three of you uh, for joining us today. And, you know, Black History Month is something that we celebrate um, uh, not only in the United States, but even in the church. We love to celebrate diversity. And I just wanted to ask, I think the first question that we should uh, dive into is how is it what is it like to um, know that you are a history maker yourself as the first set of uh, Bible students who are are racially diverse from uh, traditionally who we have as Bible students of Filipino descent you can start off uh, anyone who wants to dive right in First of all, I want to say God, good morning to Bishop Jonathan and to you, Brother Ranio. Thank you so much for uh, having us here. And uh, to answer your question, what does it mean for me uh, personally to be the first full-blooded uh, African-American to be here in um, the ministry? It means a lot to me. Um, I didn't understand at first the weight um, that it carries, but then I, under I started to understand that when there will be future um, young people that are of African uh, descent, when they are um, in the church, it'll let them know uh, that somebody has already went before them. So it would make it easier for them to um, enter the ministry knowing that they're not going to be the only one. So it helps me to feel uh, at ease because I'm going to be helping those that's going to come after me when it comes to entering the ministry. Isn't it, isn't it a daunting feeling to know that uh, you are setting the standard for those behind you? Oh, yes. It is, um, it's, it's, a, it's a heavy weight that I have to live up to, and I have to um, do more so that they will have um, a goal or a standard to reach when they enter. So I have to set the plate high for them to be able to reach it. Mm -hmm. I know you have a lot of uh, questions in your head that you would like to ask our guests, but uh, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Shaquille, uh, what is that that you're uh, wearing? Looks like it's something that is uh, quite popular among mm -hmm. African uh, Americans. 
So, Bishop, this is actually called uh, a daishiki. So, in a part of a part of African culture, um, the many countries in Africa, this is like our traditional clothing. So, let's say, for example, the Filipino, they, you guys would wear uh, barong Tagalog. Mm -hmm. For us, of African descent, we wear this. It's like traditional clothing. So It's, it's called a daishiki. Okay, so that's just like your national costume. Um... Yes, you can say that. Mm. You can say that. And you 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 wear that in uh, important events. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that is something that we need to understand because uh, an important part of culture is uh, our clothing yes. and our apparels and mm -hmm. our clothing, our apparels, the things we we wear, mm -hmm. even the accessories we we wear, they. Uh, express yes. our cultural identity and mm -hmm. what is it uh, on your uh, head right so, there what's that so this is called simply a pick it's uh, what we use to simply style our hair mm -hmm. and we just leave it in so you know it's okay. like a it's like a style that mm -hmm. a lot of African Americans um, have so yeah. you know if you brethren if you see any uh, African American have have this in their hair it's just it's a part of style okay so it's more of an accessory. You can say that. Mm. And at the same time, it's a comb. Yes, sir. Okay. Exactly. And speaking of hair and comb, that's something Brother Eddie will not have any problem. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. So, uh, Brother Eddie, yes. uh, tell us about your African-American uh, ancestry. Well, my father is African-American, and uh, my mom is from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually... Um, we did. We were able to trace back from my father's side uh, the ancestry line, and uh, they turned out to be slaves. Uh, my, 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 from my father's side, the family they were slaves, and so um, you know that's where I'm from. Uh, I'm a, I identify myself as African American. I grew up on the south side of Chicago, mm -hmm. um, all American culture. So uh, that's where I'm at. That's who I'm at. Uh, did your dad uh, any uh, give you any historical lessons about your roots? He did. Uh, my dad was born in 1944, mm. so he he had me pretty late. But the way he raised my brother and I, we were raised as if we live during his time, during his generation. So all, all the wisdom. Uh, the words, everything came from his time. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as race is concerned, um, I was raised as of, you know, during his time. Okay. Uh, and um, you both enjoy your uh, black roots as well as your uh, yes. Filipino roots. Yes, I'm proud to be who I am. Awesome. Yeah. How about you, Sister Charlene? Tell us something about yourself. Um, I want to say good morning and thank you for having us here, Bishop and Brother Reno. Uh For me, I, I was actually born in the Philippines. And my dad is Caribbean and my mom is Filipino, so half, half. And growing up in the Philippines wasn't, even, uh, wasn't easy for me because I was the different one. I was the odd one out. So that's why I moved here in, the, in America to live a better life. And this is where I found the church where I have been, you know, accepted as who I, I was, and I felt loved here in the church as a mixed, growing up as a mixed child, it felt different, but it was kind of a good different because I felt unique, and uh, that's where I found uh, the love for myself and who I was in the church because the people around me embraced who I was and not what I looked like. And yeah, Brother Shaq, uh, earlier mm. before we were we started the show today, mm. um, you and Bishop were having a little chat about mm. your background with mm. uh, other church. So um, can you give us a little bit of a, a sneak preview into your life and your experience before of your um, church setting uh, before you mm. were here in the PMCC Fourth Watch and uh, express to us how uh, the trans the the exchange period was of of being uh, in a black church before and and moving into uh, the church here now today. Um, to answer your question, uh, Brother Raniel, uh before I was in a Baptist church, um, 
I was probably uh, in my, when I was little, I remember uh, growing up there and, um, you know, it's natural. You feel like, um, you know, everyone around you, it's like a brother and a sister because you, of course, share the same race. Uh, for the transition for me, uh, when I came to the church, um, the transition was actually pretty smooth once I felt that same brotherly affection um, that I received in that other church in the Fourth Watch, and even more in the Fourth Watch church. Um, in the Fourth Watch, we are more um, brotherly and loving than the church that I was previously at. Yeah. And it was actually crazy to me because you would think that your own people would have um, more of a deeper love. Mm. But when I came to the Fourth Watch church, I can really see that people really indeed care for me. Not that mm. those in the other church did it, but here a lot more. And it's and always You know what, because, Brother Shaq, that's one mm, of the hallmarks of the PMCC Fort Watch, mm -hmm. especially here in continental United States. Mm -hmm. uh, we are constantly uh, taught and mm -hmm. uh, educated that we should always be uh, accommodating and hospitable mm -hmm. and welcoming of, mm -hmm. you know, of all people, especially mm -hmm. if they are not, uh, you know, if they are non-Filipino like mm -hmm. you. So I'm happy to hear that. Mm -hmm. So your transition from a black church into mm -hmm. the PMC Support Watch was not uh, a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but what is it that you somehow found something quite, uh, you know, difficult to grasp? Certainly, there's always something that kind of uh, rubs you differently. Um, for me, Bishop, it's just the language barrier. Mm -hmm. Everything else for me is for sure. It's okay, mm -hmm. but the I food, don't really the, understand. The food is okay. <laughs> the food is okay with you. Oh, yeah, uh, pancit uh, is okay with you. Oh yeah, adobo. Adobo yes, is his favorite. Adobo, adobo's adobo. my okay. favorite. Okay, how about excellent. tuyo? Tuyo. Tuyo. Oh yeah, I remember you uh, taught me how to uh, <laughs> eat eat that. I did. Yes. yes. Okay. You taught me how to uh, open the fish, and it's hard because my hands are big, <laughs> and the fish is so small. I'm just like. Oh my goodness. But yeah, yeah it's uh um, so it's it's the language. It's just the biggest yeah, that's the 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 thorn sticking out, it's just the language. Mm -hmm. Other than that, everything else is okay. We may be different in a lot of in a lot of ways, but the main thing is just the language. The language barrier is the biggest thing. Uh what church uh were you uh converted? Um I was converted um two thousand thirteen in the local church of North Carolina during the seventh anniversary. Maybe you can give them uh, a shout out today. Oh, shout out, shout out, uh, North Carolina brethren. Cookout fam. Cookout fam. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I was, the conversion was very uh, easy and simple for me because I knew that I needed Jesus. I needed to really know him in a deep and sincere way. So actually, Presbyter Tess was the one that was preaching. Oh. Uh, that time in the anniversary. Mm -hmm. And then when it came to the end, they were asking, do you want to accept Christ? And I mm -hmm. said, okay, yeah, let's go. Let's do this. I'm mm -hmm. ready for a sincere change because I needed a change in my life or I probably would have ended up in a lot worse situation. Mm -hmm. So that was that, uh, that pivotal moment uh, mm -hmm. for you. When mm -hmm. you attended the church anniversary, you were listening to Presbyter Tess. Mm -hmm. And that moment, it just dawned on you. Mm -hmm that you need to take your relationship with Jesus, your faith in God, to mm -hmm. a deeper level. Amen, exactly. And that's the, the day, the moment, that everything changed uh, for you until mm -hmm. you decided, sorry, to, to enter mm -hmm. uh, the ministry. Um, what can you say right now, being the first 100% uh, black person to be in uh, the ministry? Um, it's an honor for me personally um, to to be in a ministry is already an honor, but to be the first, um, like you said, full, it is an uh, honor to my people mm. for them. Like I was saying earlier, for them um, to let them know that, you know, don't be afraid to you know mm. to take that step. Mm. If God is calling you, just take the step. Just go because mm. there's been already someone that came before you mm. that understands like, where you come from. So it makes people a lot um, com more comfortable mm. for them to go knowing that there was somebody else. Uh, Brother Eddie, yes. and this is for Sister Charlene, uh, can you relate to any of his experiences 
especially with his conversion and his, uh, you know, uh, dealings with the things that uh, uh, that are that are in the church when it comes to language. Can you relate to any of his challenges? I definitely can. Um, when I was still a Bible student, uh, it was it was hard to adjust, not just to the culture of the church, but to the culture of the Philippines. Because I grew up in a, an American culture, mm. African American. Mm. Um, you know, my dad always taught us everything. And so um, uh, when I was with uh, in Daily City, uh, Pastor Even, Pastor Mads, shout out, um, they were patient with me. And I, I really love them. I appreciate them because it's not easy to adjust to the mm -hmm. language like what Brother Shaq mm -hmm. said and, mm -hmm. and the culture of the church, uh, learning a new culture, learning the Filipino culture, because uh, uh, it's frustrating. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, Though I made a, uh, you know, I'm still adjusting to it. There are times where I was frustrated, trying to, you know, there's tension learning it. But uh, I'm thankful, especially to Pastor Even, Pastor Mads. They they had the patience uh, to, uh, <laughs> I guess, deal with me or you mm. know to train me, to mold me, mm. Mm. and um, and I I would have to say that yeah, mm. it's. I understand it's, uh, uh, w w what you're trying to say. But I just want to also say this, that, uh, you know, for all three of you and for other uh, members of the PMCC Fort Watch who are non-Filipino, uh, I, I want to be clear on this, okay? Uh, you're, you, you are not expected to be like us. Yeah. You're, you're not expected or required mm -hmm. to like what we eat uh, mm -hmm. say, uh, and, and speak our language. And like what I always say, uh, we're not trying to Filipinize you. Right. That's not our intention to Filipinize or to make a non-Filipino, you know, become like us. That's mm -hmm. why there's no initiation. We're not gonna <laughs> tell you if you are gonna be a fort watcher, you need to eat balut. We don't yeah. sit you down for a boodle fight. Yeah, <laughs> that's your. We're not. We're not gonna <laughs> Filipinize you. Mm -hmm. And you should not also mm -hmm. expect us to be also like you. So we're not mm -hmm. trying to, to be Americans. Like what mm -hmm. I always say, we're here in the church simply to be Christians. Amen. And a, a true biblical Christian is someone that is comfortable in mm -hmm. his skin yes. mm -hmm. and to appreciate his true worth and his value mm -hmm. and uses his, his ethnicity mm -hmm. uh, to project and to to show the image of Christ Jesus. Yeah. I and love that Bishop that you're talking about uh being comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I have a question for Sister Charlene and Brother Eddie um being multiracial uh, <clears throat> or biracial where how is it to find a, a place in your being comfortable with your identity even growing up or uh, throughout your Bible school years or uh, even up until now, where do you find the right place between understanding your Filipino culture, your African American culture, and using that to your advantage in in being able to uh, relate to a wider um, you know range of individuals? Um, going off of that, Brother Reno, um, I learned to, like I said earlier, I learned to embrace myself more in the church because they didn't look at. Um, who I was physically, but who I was inside. But that's when I learned actually like who I was physically. Like growing up being dark skinned, it wasn't easy around Filipinos because they would, uh, their culture there is white is beautiful. But I've met people in the church where they would tell me, your skin is so nice, that your skin is beautiful. You should learn how to embrace that more. and. Mm -hmm. And that's what I appreciate about the culture of the fourth watch of the church that they um, they lift you up in spirit and they mm -hmm. always support you for who you are. And mm -hmm. I also learned how to embrace my hair, how it's uh, curly. Because before I would just straighten it all the time, and then, but now it's just curly. <laughs> well, Eddie, how did you deal with your hair? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> or its absence. <laughs> It's a beard. It's non-existent. <laughs> anyway, speaking mm. of uh, Black History Month, mm. what is it about uh, 
being black that you are so proud of uh, aside from your uh, skin mm -hmm. and, and culture? Uh, anything in particular? Um, black History Month, well, it makes, well, for me personally, how it affects me, I'm grateful for it because there's a lot of things that were invented uh, by black people that people don't know. Um, and Black History Month, uh, Month gives people that opportunity to know more about the black inventors, the black scientists. Mm. And Africa itself is the most rich continent in, towards, in terms of resources. Mm. So just to know that I'm from a place of richness already gives me just that extra kick. Obviously, you are proud mm. and you should. Oh, yes. Be proud of your uh, culture. But in particular, anything mm. in particular is specific that you like being uh, black? Anything in particular? Um, uh, maybe it's something about food, something about your culture, your language, your gestures, your behavior. What is it? We're just a powerful, passionate bunch of people. Mm -hmm. um, very powerful in everything that we do uh, when it comes to speaking, uh, being athletic and like in a lot of different places like mm -hmm. we've been known to excel when given the opportunity to mm -hmm. to do so mm -hmm. so just being a part of that is just inspiring in itself i'm going to ask you really a very very difficult question Go okay for it, Bishop. We're ready. i want you to be honest which one is better soul food or pinoy food <laughs> <laughs> Soul food or Pinoy food, for me personally. Um, they you both, can lie. <laughs> they, they both raise your blood pressure equally. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. They both raise your blood pressure I like pressure that. Equally. that, that that's honesty right there. There's okay. some that I like and some that I don't like when it comes to soul mm -hmm. food and Pinoy food. Okay. Um, but there's nothing that beats that baked macaroni and cheese and fried chicken. Uh -huh. Brother Raniel knows about it when he oh, yeah. ate, when he's always eating Bojangles <laughs> in the East yeah. Coast. Speaking of Bojangles, uh, can someone from North Carolina send me? Well, Edgar is on the way. Okay. He's driving right yes. now. And I, I want the yes. biscuits still crisp and, yes. and, and fresh. Oh, yes. Yeah, and the chicken. Yeah, I miss Bojangles. Just the name of it is sounds mm. already delicious. Bojangles. <laughs> For those of you who do not know what Bojangles <clears throat> is, it's the re that's the real name of uh, that store, right? Yes, that yeah. is. Bojangles. Mm. Does, it, does it have any meaning? Bo, I just know it's bow time. <laughs> bow, bow time. <laughs> it's bow time. <laughs> okay, how about you? Uh, for those, uh, for the two of you, what is it uh, about uh, from your African American ancestry that you are uh, proud of and that you can that really resonates uh, strongly yeah. uh, to both of you? Black History Month. It's more than just celebrating the first. Like oh, you're the first baseball the black baseball player. You're the first judge. You're the first. It's more. It's it's a great accomplishment mm -hmm. that you're the first, but so uh, it is in sports. In, in anything. Okay. Yeah. In, in, in everything, uh, it's it's good to recognize that achievement. But the deeper part of it is recognizing that uh, no one race is superior to the other. Of course. You can't like oh black people. You can't expect to achieve this. Mm. Black History Month shows us that uh, regardless of your race, mm. uh, anything is possible. And mm -hmm. by like God's that. grace, you know, um, mm. Shaq is full black. I'm half. Mm. My father's mm. uh, black. My mom's from the Philippines. Mm. But now that I graduated, you know, I, I never would have dreamed that I would be one of the first mm -hmm. to become a minister. Mm. I, I never, it never crossed my mind. And, uh, and, um, it's not that I entered the church saying that I'm going to be the first black person. No, it's, uh, you know, I'm really focused on God, focused mm -hmm. on the church, the doctrines. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's also, it makes, it makes me feel proud knowing that I'm one of the first, you know. Mm -hmm. In my yeah. family, I'm the first to go to university. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I never, I never dream of being the first black person to do anything. So we got another history maker yeah. here. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. For me, Bishop, um, being the first um, African American woman in the mm. Bible school, it's a privilege and it's also a blessing. And like what Brother Shaq said, it's you're setting the standards. And whatever I have to watch myself in, whatever I do, I have to uh, do it in a right way. So 
when people look back mm. in the past, um, they would see what I would do, and mm. they would do better because that was the standard, and they would want to do better than the standard. Mm -hmm. And speaking of uh, African American uh, women, whether they are full blooded or coming from a mixed uh, uh, background, uh, I remember Sister Courtney, uh, Courtney Lucas from Washington, D.C. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was the first one who entered the uh, Apostolic Missionary Program. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we would like to also give a shout out uh, yes, to you. her. Courtney. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions uh, for our uh, guests, uh, feel free to call us. Our numbers are 888 774 Do call us and uh, they're going to be answering your questions, or you could also comment. And mm -hmm. I believe uh, we have some uh, questions yeah. uh, sent to us, Brother Reno. <clears throat> yeah, so f um, from Sister Gloria Jet Williams, mm -hmm. uh, she actually says, so Brother Shaq, I have the same feeli feeling about my Baptist church ministry after 60 plus years, mm -hmm. and I've learned so much from following in the PMCC Fourth Watch. I feel very comfortable. I don't have too much problem with the language difference, and I'm so thankful. Praise so, the Lord. Um, to God she is one of our African American sisters, I believe, in uh, NorCal. Yeah. Sister Wait, I'm sorry. Where? Where yeah. does she? Sister Gloria, let us know where you are from, mm -hmm. uh, so we can recognize you. And then, Thanks brother Lord. Ray Floho from Riverside Extension has uh, a question for you all. He says, good morning to everyone. Although we may still be far from where we want to be as a culturally rich congregation, mm -hmm. the continuous push to reach outside of the Filipino community is momentous and a notable effort. My question to each of the guests is, a Amen. if you were bishop for a day, what would you change or add in our church to gain confidence with your non-Filipino family and friends? We can definitely learn a lot from you. Thank you, and God bless you all for being great mm. spiritual examples. So That's his, a great question. His question is, if you were bishop for a day uh, in his position, what would you add or change in the church to gain confidence with, <coughs> your, with your non-Filipino friends and family? <coughs> make a soul food day. <coughs> well, yes, to make a soul food day would be... Would be uh, for us, a good starter, right? Yeah, it will be, be a good starter, but... Um, Pretty much for us to be able to relate and to come closer to you, we really have to feel where your heart is coming from. It's not really in a lot of doing a lot of fancy things that will draw us, but it's really us seeing that you tr you sincerely, truly care about who we are. That would make uh, us drawn to you into the church. Amen. Like for me personally, it, even though like they spoke to Gallup, I felt the love. The love is what you really have to heavily target to get in, from anybody, from any race, whether you be black, Mexican, when they feel that you sincerely care and love for them, they will come back and they will open up more and even get baptized. And don't try not to speak too much Tagalog too, because they're not going to understand a word you're saying. <laughs> Just those two things and, um, you know, you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Where are you, Sister Charlene and Brother Eddie? <clears throat> uh, I would take this approach. If I was a bishop for a day, maybe I would uh, assign the pastor who who's strong in the culture to mm. to a place where it's predominantly non uh, non Filipino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, non Filipino. Uh, because my experience in Washington D.C. at uh, at that time, we were very diverse. I, I want to say that the the non Filipino membership was more than the Filipino membership. Mm. And, and for some reason, I, I don't know, I mean, the people whom I invited for evangelism, I held a conversation with, and they attended the church, they were mostly non-Filipino, mm. African-American. As a matter mm. of fact, uh, Sister Monica, Sister Courtney's mom, mm -hmm. Sister Sydney, uh, I met them at the chain station. I remember there is an uh, uh, African-American mother of two that I brought mm. in. Um, one heavy set uh, African guy, I forgot his name, but I, I miss him. Uh, I met another, another so a, a lot of my contacts were uh, not Filipino. It's not that I was biased or prejudiced. I, I it just to happens the that they gravitate to yeah, you. It, it's yeah, it's the culture. So if I was a bishop, maybe I would assign uh, 
uh, or evaluate a, a minister. Yeah, that's, a, that's one yeah. of the reasons I'm keeping uh, Mr. Lightborn yeah. here in South Bay. If, if so, if it so <laughs> happened that um, our, our extension in Georgia gets open, if yeah. Shaq becomes a pastor, wow. uh, I, I can see it growing mm. because mm -hmm. he knows the culture. He knows the people. Do you like to be relate. sent out to Georgia, uh, Shaquille? I think he does. I mean, yes, if that's God's will for me. How about Alabama? Um, yeah, I'm going to open up an extension there. <laughs> <laughs> you were a little bit tentative for a moment. <laughs> yeah. But um, you love Atlanta being in a, uh, Georgia, in the South, for this yeah, past winter. It was, uh, it was beautiful to yeah, be, to it, be it there because mm -hmm. it's very rich in uh, African-American culture there mm -hmm, in uh, sure. Atlanta, Georgia. Uh -huh. Like, okay. a lot of people there are black. Yeah. How about you, Sister Chat? You can close us off on this question. Um, <clears throat> what I was thinking, if I were <clears throat> to be a bishop, uh, since you are very influential and you know how to get your ways around people, mm. maybe you can bring a team with you, uh, specifically Shaq and the. Um, I'm not a team. I'm only one person. <laughs> <laughs> Multiracial <laughs> people be. with you, and um, <clears throat> maybe visit another church that is um, full of multiracial people, and mm. probably you know fellowship with them, get to mm. know them, and then might bring them to our church one day. Mm -hmm. Actually, speaking of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the makeup of, uh, the racial makeup of churches, uh, mm -hmm. we have our first <coughs> indigenous mm -hmm. uh, Tukis church in Guam mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that oh, is yeah. also pastored by uh, a Tukis mm -hmm. or someone from, who is a native of uh, Guam. His name is Brother Blesswin Iron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, we would like to give a shout out to all our Guamanian uh, brethren. And we're excited to meet them tomorrow. Okay, our incoming missionaries. Coming? Yes, okay. from oh, Guam. Oh, praise yes. God! So uh, I think we got another question from from here. Oh, by the way, Sister Gloria is in Georgia, but mm. she's a friend of Sister Kathy Asoy from yeah. Fremont. Mm. So she's been joining the online worship in Fremont Praise the Lord. every Sunday, um, ever since she was invited during Home Free. Wow. So we see the, the impact of Home Free and yes. global the Lord. evangelization there. Praise the Lord. Um, so Welcome, Sister Gloria, and yes. uh, God bless you. She's in Atlanta, Georgia, following with Georgia. Sister Lani and Brother June. So mm -hmm. thank you, Sister Gloria, for, uh, for nice. joining us, and we love having you uh, with us in our Fourth Watch family. One of these days, we're going to have a, um, a, a fellowship of all PMCC Fort Watch brethren here in the United States. I think that's going to be a great event, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. when, yes. when everything Amen. eventually really opens up, mm -hmm. we can have a day of, uh, you know, racial fellowship mm -hmm. that is going to be a fellowship of all non-Filipino mm -hmm. members of the Fort Watch in the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will not accept any Filipino <laughs> attendees uh, from the ushers, uh, from the security to the ushers, and even to the speakers. You know, we're, we're going to have someone who is non-Filipino. Yes. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. From Brother Roberto Ford, I'm going to change this question just a little bit. But um, he, let's change the question to what is your prayer or vision for impacting the community, or when you become a, a local pastor of your own church, how do you aim or envision to impact the community with uh, your background and influence? For me, uh, personally, what I want to do is to highly give guidance, strongly give guidance to the younger uh, generation, because um, at one point I was lost, but it's when um, I was in the church what really it's what really helped me to be grounded and um to be stable and rooted uh in following christ so for me i i really want to get to those people those young people before it's too late because mm -hmm. for me it was almost too late but by god's grace he uh pulled me out just in time and i want to do the same because i know there are more <clears throat> just like me that are out there just waiting to be uh grasped and brought to the Lord. Yeah, I would have to agree with Shaq. It, it has to start with the youths. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it has to be teaching Christ, salvation, but you also have to teach them the lesson, especially with race, mm -hmm. that uh, 
the the ingredient to overcome racism it has to be love it's the love of god mm -hmm. because if you if you're because growing up my dad will always tell me uh he says eddie you cannot expect to be friends with white people he always tell me that mm -hmm. uh, he would because he he grew he he lived through that mm -hmm. and um oh, yeah. if if you were to ask me before i was baptized how many white friends i had zero mm -hmm. but now that i'm in the church i have Quite a lot, yeah. Mm. Uh, just Brother Bill in South Bay, Brother mm. Jim Lilly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Brother Gary from Washington, D.C. I miss you. Mm. Um, Brother Jim of Chicago. Uh, so it's the love of God that keeps us together. And so mm -hmm. with the youths, well, there, nobody's teaching them that. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in the houses of kids, we're mm. being taught, you know, this is what white people do. Mm. Let's protest. You know, mm -hmm. But the, the solution to fix it is not being taught. God is not being taught. So uh, th that's where the vision would. Uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, since you said that, um, somehow we can say that uh, racism yeah. uh, is both reinforced on both sides. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, given that kind of, uh, that kind of uh, orientation. But you are so on point when you say that it is really the love of God, Amen. the love of Christ Jesus, Amen. that somehow uh, blurs mm -hmm. these uh, ethnic lines mm -hmm. and uh, enables us to enjoy our uh, oneness in yeah. God's church. Amen. Not that there's something wrong with our color, of course Amen. not. Mm -hmm. But what the Word of God is telling us that we should not allow our differences mm -hmm to make us be skeptical of others and to have that uh, feeling of animosity, mm -hmm. yeah. but mm -hmm. to use our mm -hmm. differences in order to somehow reinforce our community. Yeah. Amen. And uh, we celebrate our diversity here. Amen. And so for those of you who are members of God's church here in the United States, you're non-Filipino, again, I'd like to say this and uh, that you are uh, loved, you're valued, you're cherished, and um, let's continue working uh, together towards that uh, vision where uh, we can have uh, our unity uh, more expressed and more, uh, you know, displayed for the world to see. Home Free Radio, where the real gospel lives. Alrighty. We've got a question from uh, Brother Philip Largas, one of our ministers <laughs> in Canada. Oh, Miss Stitch out. Stitch out can finish up her uh, the question. Okay. What was your what's um, your vision or prayer for impacting the community? Um, going off what Brother Shaq and Brother Eddie said, it is really important to be impactful to the youths now because mm -hmm. this generation is uh, somewhat lost in a way because of the whole pandemic. Mm -hmm. They couldn't uh, really interact with one another personally and now everything is online but um, the kids I mean the generation now is more vocal in their uh, opinion mm. and I just think that we should uh, always remind them that especially our, the kids in the church always remind them that God is always there for them and they can't forget God in their times of youth so yep. All right. yeah, that's, that's the way to go you start them young yes all right, so Brother Philip's question, and he's of a multiracial, multiracial uh, mixed marriage. Mixed marriage. Dis I, I believe his father is uh, Greek, yes. and his mother is Filipina. Yeah, mm -hmm. he says he asks if there's room for one question. I'd like to ask, what kind of perks and advantages do you see yourself having, being of unique race and culture? Communication, communication, definitely, because people will relate or feel like they will they will feel more comfortable to open up to me than they would to, let's say, a Filipino because we share the common uh, skin skin tone and maybe background. So communication is the biggest perk. I'm able to communicate with more people, mm -hmm. specifically to uh, African-American and African itself, African people. Mm -hmm. Okay, for the uh, two of you, Brother Eddie? For me, uh, I can say one perk 
of me being mixed, I guess, is uh, living a life that is colorful in a way. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> because, funny. I like that. Literally. Um, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> because um, uh, when I interact with, uh, with other people, they try to ask me, like, are you this, are you this, are you this? I'm like, I'm this and this. I'm like, oh, I thought you were this. And it's just interesting and it's like, it's yeah, it's interesting and lively in my life. Are you talking about how sometimes people would mix up? Like I think somebody thought you were Ilocano, right? No, some people or from would Baguio. say, "Are you Mexican? Are you Indian? Are you this?" I'm, I uh-huh. take my mask off. I'm just Filipino and black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I'd say the biggest perk, uh, you can communicate. Yeah, little Shaq, you can mm. communicate with anybody. I mean, Filipinos, black folks, white folks. Hispanics, um, I think that would be, yeah, that's it for me. Mm-hmm. Like, even in the church, uh, it, when I was in Washington, D.C., I mentioned that a lot because it, it was very mm-hmm. diverse. I, the the vibe of the people, I, I could connect with them. I, mm-hmm. I remember Brother Gary, um, he's white, he's Caucasian, but I, I, I know a lot of his generation stuff. You know, I was born in the 90s. I have no business knowing, you know, his generation, but... Uh, there's a way I can talk with him that we click, mm-hmm. and then when we go to when I go to Sister Courtney and Sister Monica and their family, there's a different vibe. Um, especially in South Bay, the way Brother Shaq and I talk to each other, mm-hmm. completely different than <laughs> you know how we talk to others. And uh, mm-hmm. you just need to uh, yeah know how to talk to people. So yeah. I think. <clears throat> that that's one of the perks. Uh, is because, there a difference? Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. is there a difference in uh, the culture of the African American community based on where you lived? I mean, Sir Child grew up in Bay Area, and then you grew up in in south the south side, side of yeah. Chicago, and and Shaq was born and raised in Raleigh, North Carolina, mm. in in the South. So, can you differentiate or give us a, a preview or mm. some insight of what it was like from from <laughs> where you grew up? How would you answer this, bro? Uh, growing up in Chicago, that, it's depressing. It's very depressing. Almost every corner is either a church or a liquor store. Mm. And on top of that, you see all the the viol- the gang violence uh, on the Channel 9 news. It's, there's always a shooting going on. Mm. And uh, I, I know two of my friends who died to gun violence, mm. high school friends. Yeah. And so uh, that, you know, where you grow up, it sticks with you, and so um, uh, so I have to say, yeah, uh, it's such a negative environment. It didn't make me negative, but it made me more like streetwise, mm-hmm. more more aware. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you were more conscious. That, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. How about you, Brother Shai? Uh For me personally, I feel like um, there could there could be um, a difference because um, of where you're of where you're from, but then there is something that just unifies us. I cannot mm. really explain it, but even though I, I may see another black person like from a different place, we're just mm. like, oh yeah, you're black, I'm black, what's up, my, what's up fam? Like, <laughs> like we're just like, we're just close and we're tight just because of, uh, you know, we, we went through the same thing, because even though you're from different places, we share um, the commonality of experience. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, it's just like that. Mm. I think it's just because uh, the way that people view us, so many of us have faced like being looked at different, being talked about just because of our skin color. And then we kind of unite to make ourselves stronger to try to be like close with those who share, um, who, who share in those experiences, just like to build up one another. So I guess um, we just always try to build each other up, like no matter where we're from. Mm-hmm. What about you, Sir Child? Um, for me, growing up in the Bay Area is pretty, um, I can say, united in the community mm-hmm. because uh, even though we're all mixed with races, we still find our um, connection with one another, whether it's like through music or mm. dance. I can say we're pretty ra- rowdy, but uh, <laughs> we have each other's backs when one is down, but... I can say 
the area. Mm -hmm. All right, sister, uh, we have a question from Beverly Bedford <laughs> mm. here in Los Angeles. She says, so all the guests, my question is, how did you deal with bullying, if any, growing <laughs> up? I fought back to be, uh, okay, I'm going to be sh sh uh, very honest with you because during that time that I was bullied, I wasn't uh, very strongly uh, convicted. Uh, I would fight back. I would throw fists. Um, I didn't tolerate being bullied. And then I started working out. And actually, that's what made me start working out, to be physically strong. Mm -hmm. So no one would uh, take advantage of me or try to intimidate me. And now it's like switched around. I'm the one, they just look at me, they're intimidated already. <laughs> but I, I, I simply just, I just fight back, just to be honest. So now they're looking at you as some kind of a non-bully. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they think that I'm a bully. But if you really know not, me, genuinely, no, I, I yeah. don't. I'm not going to put anyone down, but mm. if you mess with me, you know, uh, I have to fight back. Time to tussle. It's time to tussle. <laughs> and that is one mistake I'll never commit. How I dealt with bullying? Um, have you been uh, bullied oh, I before? Have. Oh, man, I think... Once Someone took your lunch out. money. Eddie, <laughs> give me your lunch money. I've been called Arthur. I've been said my face looked like... Arthur? Yeah. What, what's wrong bald. being called Arthur? Because <laughs> he's bald, that's why. Oh. oh. Why are you? Oh, man. That is me. But, uh, do I, you know... It depends. You know, I, I can joke around with it. But if mm. somebody's really malicious and, you know, mm. harassing, I let them have it. I, you know, mm. I let... I, I set the line. And, um... Well, I'm thankful I'm not like that anymore. But how about uh, now that you are uh, Christians, Fort Watchers, mm. uh, how, how do you deal with this, uh, you know, uh, this kind of uh, actions? Uh. Uh, for me before, uh, when I was a kid, um, my grandma would say I would come home running and crying because of the people that would mess mm. with me at school just because of my color. But as I grew up and... For me now, um, as a Christian, I wouldn't want to fight back because mm. that's just their thoughts and their opinion. And I know who I am and mm. and whatever mm. their thoughts and opinions doesn't affect me because, like I said, I know who I am. Mm. I'm a child of God. And mm. if they're going to keep on bullying me for who I am, I'm just going to let God do the work instead of me fighting evil with evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, Amen. That's actually what I was going to ask. Was that's she, the best way to get back at me. Yeah. Was she referring to being bullied because of skin color? That's what actually I was yeah, trying Yeah, I think to. skin color. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah. Still, I fought. <laughs> still, I, <laughs> still, I fought. And In I evangelism, just, when you do evangelism, mm. uh, do you get this kind of uh, a bullying, uh, you know, uh, straight up bullying mm. have you been you know bullied like Fear. in your face or there were those little you know uh, gestures that you feel like you're less than who you are <laughs> they are they are afraid of me um mm. i can tell because um i watch people's body language and demeanor when i would try to invite them what they would do is they would cling onto their purse Mm. And in my head, I said, if I really wanted your purse, I could get it. <laughs> I'm not going to take, I have nothing to uh, steal mm. from you. I just simply just want to invite you. So what I would do to make them feel more comfortable, because, you know, I would go and I would evangelize in Seafood City. To make people feel comfortable, you have to show that you share something in common. So I would just speak Tagalog to them. Oh, magana numaga po, kumusta? Like I would say to them like, how, how, are, how are they doing? I would you know, speak to them. So then once, once they feel like I am a no threat, but I am with them, they're okay. Mm. But if they just see my face and I will say, hi, hello, they're like, oh no, <laughs> they're scared. But yeah. that's what I just simply do. I think, Stucha, you have a story to talk about um, with like someone yelling expletives at Filipinos and you went over and, and solved racism <laughs> itself oh, in that that's moment. Funny. So, that's bad, uh, one actually. time we were evangelizing in Tambuli and then at the corner of the street, there were these two young African-American kids mm. and they were just yelling out, I hate Filipinos, like over and over again. And I was like, Okay, let me just come back. So it's I went up there to them, and then I went, like, as a sister, I guess, like, hey, man, what's up? What's going on? 
<laughs> like they're like this this guy was just like messing with me and stuff like that. I was like, just let it go, bro. And then I'm Filipino too, so don't mess with uh just don't mess just because one person is Filipino doesn't mean you have to hate the whole race mm -hmm. just because someone messed with you. But yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> Right. Actually, I have actually one more uh, <clears throat> quick one. Actually, yeah, now, I was thinking about now that we sp are speaking about this, there was one instance. Um, Sister Shia, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Um, we were uh, caroling in the restaurant. And then while we were caroling before a uh, pandemic, in the middle of our song, this Asian guy, I don't know who he was, he started yelling at, at me and then start saying to the uh, the boss, oh, why do you let these guys um, like sing here? These guys are bad people. That guy there, he tried to break into my car. And then like me and Shai, we were so taken back, especially me, I was taken back. Mm. I'm like, wait, what? What are you talking about? I never tried to break into your car. Mm -hmm. And like, um, Sister Shai, she was, uh, she was with me. She was like, no, like he's been with me. Like, like we're caroling, like we've been doing this. And he was trying his best to like, try to show to everyone that we're, that I'm a bad person, that I tried to break into his car, and I didn't. And then, um, like, Sister, I think he was Filipino. Sister Shai started speaking to God. I don't know what she said, but I know she was trying to defend me from her, her gestures. Thank you so much, Sister Shai. But then uh, the boss of the restaurant also knew who I was, because I was caroling in that restaurant for four years. So mm. they defended me, and they knew that I'm a stand-up guy, Mm. And everything was, um, you know, it just fizzled out. But that was, I guess, one of the few times that I was actually, like, persecuted in my face. And I was mm. so shocked. I was just taken aback, like, whoa, like, I didn't do that. Yeah. Well, it's been uh, a very wonderful uh, time mm -hmm. uh, to have all three of you here mm -hmm. at the living room of the Home Free mm -hmm. uh, Radio. And uh, once again, uh, mm -hmm. thank you all for uh, taking the time uh, to be our guest and to mm -hmm. speak about your uh, black roots and mm -hmm. how we can be able to uh, make our church uh, more mm -hmm. impactful in terms of our race and uh, culture. And now we're going to uh, proceed with the rest of our program. And definitely uh, my co-host here is itching to talk about food. Yes. <gasps> All right, we'll be diving right in. And you guys can join us for this segment for sure. Yes. We'd love to have you for Do you guys our... have any uh, favorite uh, breakfasts? We'll just talk breakfast now. For a slice of life. <laughs> Actually, we have a surprise uh, gift, and we can enjoy this together. This is from Sister Elder Jolina Zapanta and family. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. They are from West Covina, and mm -hmm. they actually sent us... Uh, oh, this is crazy. They wow. sent us Panera bagels, because we were wow. talking about bagels oh, oh, yesterday. Oh, bagels. Wow. And coffee. So thank okay. you, Elder Joel, for Bagel Hero. Can yes. can can we uh, yeah uh, show it uh, on camera, we'll please? Put it in front of our guests. No, 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 right here, right here, oh, in the front. right here. Yeah, here we go. Our uh, room service is kind of confused. Sponsored by. Okay. This is so the Panera. Uh, they yeah, got can, us. Can we show that on uh, camera, please? An assortment of bagels. Okay. Uh, cream cheese, mm -hmm. and then we have a box of hazelnut coffee. Uh, Thank you enjoy. so much, uh, Elder Jolita and Brother Harvey Zapanta, for being so uh, generous in giving us this uh, breakfast. Speak. I, I I thought they came from uh, Canada. So I think the Canadians were starting the conversation about the Montreal. Okay, so that's their bagel. part. Just talk about Just it. Just talk, but Sister Jolina. No food, no real food. <laughs> okay. She jumped right in. She said, I'm going to uh, send some yeah. goodies over. So thank you so I much. I can't wait to get my hands on those Panera uh, bagels. Yes. So, uh, thank you. Hey, Brother Sam, do you have any connections uh, in Toronto? Maybe they can uh you know send us uh, like montreal uh canada a montreal bagels yeah 
no, no one wants to send. Uh, can, so. That's not so Canadian. That's not so Canadian. Not very nice. Canadians are, yeah. So if there's any Canadians out there listening to this, I dare you send us your world famous, Montreal as you so bagel. claim, the Canadian uh, bagels. I can't wait to uh, taste them. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining us today. How I wish, Brother Rainio that we could share this uh, breakfast to uh, all of them. Yes. I uh, hope you can get a bite, but we'll enjoy it on your behalf. Okay. So we're starting off our conversation again, continuing. It's not. And while we breakfast. are talking about breakfast, well, I would like to have a piece of yes. that uh, bagel. I believe if you they're warming mind. up for us. So, yeah. Uh, we'll get a, a, a taste, a bite for while we're talking. So let us know in the comment section below of your favorite breakfast or maybe you have a breakfast story uh if maybe there's a favorite breakfast that you like to cook sister cha mm -hmm. cooks for the pastoral staff she has a hallmark uh breakfast uh, item that she cooks well, can you tell us about that please Typical. There's this uh, scrambled egg with Vienna sausage. Mm. Shout out to my grandma for teaching that to me. But it's just, it's nothing special, but it's there. Yeah, <laughs> it tastes pretty good. What about your favorite breakfast items for the three of you? My, my corned beef hash with scrambled eggs, mm. and wheat toast, and black coffee. Uh, whatever restaurant I go to for breakfast, I always order that. Mm. Always. I love to see no Filipino to see no with wow, rice. Good, and eggs but you can't uh, go wrong with the uh, chicken uh tocino yeah but the to see that the chicken must be soft <laughs> right, yeah right. but and not too uh not too reddish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they say the best uh tocino in the philippines is uh from pampanga oh mm. the best tocino ever if i'm not yeah. mistaken pampanga is the cuisine capital uh, I guess so, but uh, different provinces have their uh, culinary, ex uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call, how would I say that, their culinary uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Cebu, I think it's lechon, mm. right? Yeah. One of the places there. I guess so, but the best lechon is Manila's lechon. <laughs> <laughs> Or lechon in uh, yeah in uh, Sampaloc, Manila. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, brother Shaq. What about you? Your favorite breakfast item? I'm I'm at a I'm at a tie because like Sister Cha, I like the tocino. I think you guys called it uh, topsilog. That's really tosilog. good. Mm -hmm. huh? Tapa. Tosilog. 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 Thank you. Tosilog. Yeah, that's uh, beef tapa. Ooh. I like the I like it's the beef good. tapa that is really thinly. Uh, thinly sliced mm. and crispy. Mm. Oh, and then good. you put that in uh, vinegar. Mm. In, a, in, in, in a curat vinegar and Sounds apply lice. Mm. Mm. You're getting awesome. hungry, Bishop. I am. I, am, I, am. I can I'm smell it. I can wow. smell it. It's like physically here with us. Mm -hmm. Elder Lila says fried rice with spicy chicken and double flakes. Okay. Ooh, uh, spicy chicken wow. and double flakes. Special plug for um, Elder Lai and Elder Sheila for creating this culinary masterpiece, mm. adobo flakes. Hit oh. them up if you have not already yeah. done so. Can I get uh, some? Yeah. We have this comment from uh, brother uh, Jago Monton. It's uh, from La Loma, Manila, the best lechon daw. Mm. And then from uh, Presbyter Ates, the beef tapa of Tita Cosi yeah. is the Let's best go. for breakfast, lunch, and Let's dinner. Go, we love you. <laughs> Looks like uh, we're going to be getting some of this. I think that's uh, well famous around here. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, this beef tapa of uh, Sister uh, Kosi has a cult following. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like she doesn't advertise it, but everyone is, uh, you know, dying to get their hands it's on it. It's like those, a hole-in-the-wall uh, type of restaurant. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows it, but if you find it and you yep. get to try it, it's the best. Uh, Brother Jun Mendoza says, Tuyo at Champurado. You know, I never got that combination. Mm. You what? Ooh. Tuyo and Champurado. Yeah, I, I've seen uh, I've seen that in the film. I don't get that too. I, I like my champurado really uh, dark and chocolatey, mm -hmm. and with a dash of uh, condensed milk, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, I th oh maybe... pandesal, pandesal goes better Ooh. with uh, champurado. I don't know why Tio. I think it's uh, the dichotomy of the salt and sweet. Yeah, the salt so and the sweet. I like the combination yeah. of that. Mm. Brother Jude I, I, don't, I don't like any dichotomy thing with my breakfast. I, I just it want, has to be one. I, I just only want to. Savory, yes, or I only sweet. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, uh, Elder Elder June de Guzman. This is like the toxicity in my intoxication. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can you just have breakfast here? Okay. Oh my Elder goodness. Elder June, June de Guzman said chicken he mommy has to complicate and complicate everything. I, I'm just trying to explain. <laughs> okay. You're not explaining. Wait, you're you're complicating. Okay. <laughs> can I get my uh, my His bagel. Uh, bagel right now, sir? Uh, Merlita Masca says favorite is garlic rice with mm. scrambled egg mm. with sausage. Elder Grace Zonia said yes, boy. I love Tito Cosi's beef tapa. I just ordered last week. You can order from her? Yes, she she has a I, business. I'm telling you. Yes. I, I'm telling you. She has her own following. She's like in and she, out. She makes it for a restaurant. Yeah. What? Yeah. But you have really to wait business. for two to three months before you. <laughs> <laughs> she has a small smoke. The rush order is 365 days. Uh-huh. So. <laughs> Here we go. Who else do we have? Um, Growing up, spam must be every morning before rushing yeah. in school. Sister Lucy. I, 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 I oh, yeah, suddenly I think about my daughters. Both yeah. of them love spam uh, musubi. Yes. Uh, especially, uh, what's that uh, restaurant in uh, Hawaii that oh. they love to go? L and L. Not, <laughs> not L and L. That is bro. Southern <laughs> California, bro. It's like saying uh, fortune cookie is from China. Uh, no, it's not. Speaking uh, of uh, Hawaii. What is that? Uh, Thank you, hey, Hawaii. Uh, Kalihi, my friend. Uh, what is that uh, restaurant in uh, the Philippines? Uh, in uh, Hawaii? Uh, Zipis. Mm. Yes. Uh, yeah, Zipis. That's what they have it there. Very nice. Because we have a, a Hawaiian in the house. Mr. Kalihi, also known as uh, Mr. Joshua Campania. Yes. <laughs> Elder Lies Yasun says, I'll be sending Adobo Flakes next week to you guys, Brother Shaq. Please. Wow. Look wow. Look Thank up. you so nice. much. Thank Spencer you. Lorena will be down here for CGS. So. Thank you so much. Please send it in bulk, Elder okay. Lies. Please. Uh, what, what bagel is this? I think that's what a bagel is this. Plain bagel. That's a plain bagel. Plain uh, uh, <laughs> bagel. Together, Thank you for taking a part of this because uh, we're not... <laughs> we have this uh, for, for for Kips. Okay, this is bagel. It's still warm, brother Rain. Yeah, he just hit it uh, on on cream cheese. Okay. <laughs> what do we have? Um, mm. Langonisa, tomato and fried rice. Bl- mm. Brother Blesswin is actually watching. He no, said, "Hold that on, I, I, now be, I love bagels." I'm. It shows. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I love Champorado Bishop, but I eat that with Bagoong Alamang with mixed pig. You that guys is a that? new you guys combination. Keep on, that? You guys keep on ruining the Champorado. Johnny Jesus. Oh, man. What else do we have here? Uh, Brother Blesswin said Musubi. Um, let's see. Corned beef with garlic fried rice and egg from Sister EJ Figueroa. Corned beef. Uh, yeah, there we go. She is... Corned beef addict, ox and palm. Really? You cannot feed her anything else, or Seriously. else she will throw a tantrum <laughs> and ruin everything. <laughs> everything. Yes. Uh, El- Presbyter Maritas is giving a shout out to Elder Lys Yason for the double flick she gave back in December. It was perfect on hot rice. <laughs> when we move to the GMT. <laughs> we're, go- we're going to have a place where we can cook breakfast mm-hmm. in the studio. Wow. And then it is oh, also wow. that. Because, yeah, so we're going to have it. So it's going to be like a morning TV show, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a cooking show now. Should no, have a no. Korean barbecue Shack's grill in the middle. Yeah, of we're going to have the set. Yeah, everything, yeah. And then we'll have a cooking with Chef chef Chop. <laughs> sabao or no sabao with corned beef? What? Okay. No sabao. No, I want my corned beef do dry. Dry, dry or dry? desert? Corned beef. Dry. dry. This yes. is going to be. This will ruin friendships. <laughs> Dry. Sabao or no sabao with corn brew? We said dry. 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 Everybody here? Dry. Dry is... I need a little bit of sabao with... With it's nasty when you much. it's nasty when you see the oil yeah. on the corn beef. So it's water yeah, you put on. in. So no 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 no, 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 no. You don't I, do I, that. You're ruining the dish, Make bro. it dry okay. as the dry team, as bone. Team dry. From uh, Dennis uh, brother Dennis Bidal tinapang galunggong with kamatis at itlog na maalat at fly lice. <laughs> Kaya magaling sa tennis to ito kinakain nito it. Mm. Uh, tinapang galunggong. Mm. Mm-hmm. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Can't eat without sashimi. Brother mm. Blesswin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pastor Faye Barrios, ultimate breakfast for me is Spam and garlic fried rice, sunny side eggs. Sister Shakira, this is a Southern one. 
Bojangles, huh? Chicken biscuits, bow rounds, and bowberry biscuits from Bojangles with a large sweet tea. Any time of day is respect. sweet tea. Hook us up. There's Hook no up wrong time Bojangles, to have please. sweet tea. Seriously, and the Bojangles breakfast is really good. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, there, oh my goodness. That's all I can say. The best. Chuki eats sashimi all the time. McDonald's breakfast platter in Hawaii from Belichick. Is, 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 spam, <laughs> is, is spam musubi um, originally from Japan? And then it's just been adopted by uh, the, the Pacific Islanders. We'll wait for our viewers to give us that. <laughs> yeah. So anyone from Japan, is this, uh, is the, because I know they have the, uh, the sushi, right? Mm. That has uh, rice and then the spam, and then it's uh, wrapped with um, uh, the, the, the seaweed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because well, there's a lot of Japanese in Hawaii too. There's mm. actually a lot of people who are raving about zippies. Is it really that good? Is Zippy's really good? Yeah. If you're Local from Hawaii, Hawaii, that's that's what they dig in. Yes. But there are other, you know, great restaurants there, like uh, Max's Chicken. Mm. <laughs> Brother JC Burnell said steak and eggs with black coffee. We eat that for breakfast. When do you... Yeah, that's, oh, that's the, during his birthday. I think he served some uh, of this um, steak. Uh, steak. Steak. Yeah. Mm. But mm. steak for breakfast is too much. It's kind of heavy. Yeah, I want something uh, a lot lighter than like uh, oatmeal. Oh yes. Or the grits or the, um, mm. uh, the what we we'll call that that kind of oatmeal that is a huge stone cut. Uh, stone cut. The, the big cut oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have that. Mm. What else do we got? Uh, Sister Susan Mama Clay said McDonald's Portuguese egg and rice. Oh. Mm. I think that's a Hawaiian. Um, Hawaiian meal. Brother Sam Villarreal said bacon, Canadian bacon, and a croissant. Okay. Canadian, Canadian bacon, bacon is healthier uh, than the American bacon. It's because just it's ham. more meat. Okay. Yeah, Canadian Wait. bacon. It's just ham. Canadian bacon is just ham. I will fight for that. And croissant. Okay, I'll agree with croissant. Uh, croissant. 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 I want croissant. Croissant, croissant with smoked salmon, capers. Oh. Capers and tomato and some mixed greens. Brother JC, this is your cue. Pancakes or waffles? <laughs> I'm team waffles, French Sister toast. Audrey. That is not an option. Yes. <laughs> By the way, thanks again to Elder uh, Jolina and Brother Harvey, the Sapantas. Yes. I'm, I'm currently enjoying the, the bagel and uh, the coffee. For those of you who are asking, how the bagel is, we're devouring it. So yeah, it's really good. Thank you so much again, uh, Elder Joe and Brother Harvey. A lot of people ask it. So, pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Waffles. Pancakes. Pancakes, waffles. From pancakes from Norms. Pancakes from Norms. Waffles along Avalon from Avalon. Waffle House. There you go, because those waffles are actually soft. Yes. You can't get the waffles that are hard and crispy. They have to be soft. Yeah. I don't like the waffles from McDonald's. I like the waffles from Norm's because mm -hmm. it reminds me of the waffle that my mom used to make when we were kids. Mm. And in the Philippines, we're more, uh, we love waffles in the afternoon more mm. than in the morning. Because in the morning, you're not supposed to compete with pandesal. That's our <laughs> staple every morning in the Philippines. Pandesal. Don't you dare serve a waffle. Mm -hmm. It's only in the afternoon, and we uh, and then it should be golden mm -hmm. and fluffy Ooh. and light, yes. and then you put butter. That's mm. it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Waffles are a breakfast item, but I guess if in the Philippines it is not. <laughs> it's pandesal. The king of breakfast table mm -hmm. in the Philippines is pandesal. Right mm -hmm. now, especially with uh, 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 pandesal malunggay, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be healthy. It's okay. Is waffle hot dogs a thing? Have you heard of that? No. I like I like waffle hot dogs, especially if the hot dog is from the I Philippines. I just heard about that today. Yeah? I My mom used to make that, like, there was a corn dog machine, or no, mm. a waffle maker, mm -hmm. and then she would put hot dogs in. It, it was a weird contraption. Um, they asked, Bishop, what does the Apostle eat for breakfast? Um, the Apostle eats um, uh, always healthy, but he loves to, you know, uh, pick a little here and there. So mm -hmm. he likes uh, fish, a little bit of chicken, a, a rice, here and there, fruit. So he doesn't eat with a big uh, plate before him. He, he, he picks 
uh, here and there. So yeah, that's how he eats. And, and my mother, my mother is a mutant. Uh, you could hardly see her eat, but she is uh, still strong and mm-hmm. always uh, energetic. But she, but she is the best uh, cook ever. Mm. Yeah. So I, I always want to eat something, and I use my mother's cooking as the uh, standard. Mm-hmm. So if it doesn't taste like uh, my mom's or something that is over over it or beyond it, I'm not gonna eat that. Mm. So, yeah. Okay, let's see. We have some more. Even here in Rhoda, I love Musubi. That's from Sister Merlita Masga. Thank you, Paul. Uh, waffles, Team Waffles is life. Brother Roberto, Team Pancakes, Sister Lucy. Uh, Sister Courtney Lucas. Hi, Sir Courtney. Sister Courtney! I miss you! Thanks for watching. She said waffles for sure. <laughs> Green waffles from Story and Tully in <laughs> North yes. From Send Sister that. Shakira. And yes. Sister Audrey. Even and then Sister the Eliza Schoenert said hot pandasal with star margarine. I, I am just reminded of this restaurant uh, we ate at in uh, Arizona as well as in uh, in somewhere in the east. The, is that the third watch? Uh, first watch. The first watch. Yes, the first watch. Place. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I like that uh, breakfast. Really good. Yeah, the breakfast place. And the, uh, the, the motive of the uh, restaurant, uh, it's uh, modern rustic. Mm-hmm. The first watch. Yes. Um, let's see. Sister Sherry Banyas Marshall says waffles. And then Brother AJ Oliva said pancakes are superior. Praise God. Thanks for joining us for Ooh, our Just talking breakfast. about breakfast, I'm already so full. And not to mention this great, awesome bagel, bagel. Yes. and coffee from the Sapantas. Thank you so much. Thank you again for sending us your love through uh, the form of Panera breakfast. And we want to greet all of our birthday celebrants for today. Happy birthday today, February 19th. To your brother Jeremiah de Guzman here in oh. South Bay, California. Happy birthday to brother AJ Navarro in Seattle, Washington. As well as sister Jemima Escobar from San Diego, California. Your big sister Audrey greets you. Happy 16th birthday. And then happy birthday also to sister Joy Martinez from San Diego too. To John Brian de la Cruz from Cavite. John Carlo from Solano. Uh, Nueva Vizcaya, and this Sunday, the birthdays of Sister Amabel Victoria in San Diego, California, Sister Abby Robles from Alam Rock, Stabby! shout out from your brother EJ, um, Romulo, <laughs> Romulo Tabunyar from Philippines, and on Monday is the birthday of Sister Neris Bernabeo in Antioch, California. Happy birthday to all of you, sending you our uh, well wishes and prayers and a slice of imaginary birthday cake coming your way. Um, so thank you for joining us, especially for our home free radio broadcast. We enjoyed everything uh, through, through this entirety today. Yes, for home so free. thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we're gonna surely miss your company. Uh, for the rest of this weekend and let's continue to strengthen one another uplift one another and don't forget america has finally opened go to church on sunday and get out of your couches and living rooms and enjoy the warmth of the fellowship of the brethren see you at church on sunday god bless you all Thanks for joining us for an energetic and fun-filled Friday morning. Check us out online on Facebook and YouTube to listen to today's broadcast over and over again. Tune in again next Thursday and Friday at 7 a.m. for another opportunity to start your day with the Word and discussions to get you thinking. Here on Home Free Radio, where the real gospel lives.